Hello, and welcome to my guide and to faster carding. This is episode one, Chains 101. Um, the basics of chain optimization, it's not about gains, but minimizing losses, meaning that, uh, you know, you're never going to see 100% optimization. You know, the power that you get to the rear tires is going to depend on how much loss you have from the engine. So a couple things to really look out for. These are just kind of, you know, general, general uh, setup things, uh, chain alignment. It's uh, very important. If you have any kind of misalignment, you can really lose a lot of power through friction um, pretty quickly. So I would say buy a laser. You could use it straight edge, but I think the laser is just, just the way to go. It's a little bit easier to do. Um, parallel misalignment would be like, you know, your sprocket and your engine don't line up. Um, pretty easy to find with the straight edge, but the, the angular misalignment, which would be your engine's in square to the axle. So you know, they're not in the same <clears throat> plane, I guess, is the best way to put it. Um, and so they're uh, kind of working against each other. And that's easy to find with the laser. If you if you go with the, the rear sprocket with the laser, you can put it on the top edge of your dry sprocket and then on the bottom of the engine sprocket. And uh, just make sure it lines up squarely on both of those and, and you'll be good. Um, sprocket condition, bent or soft spots. Now... Bend is something we see quite often. Some you go off the track, catch a rock, bend the sprocket. You know, don't keep running that sprocket. That sprocket's going to end up costing you a lot of power. So, um, soft spots is a little bit different. Sometimes you'll get this in manufacturing defects in the teeth. Um, you'll get just like one or two teeth that are, for whatever reason, really dug in and they cause a lot of loss. Um, but usually, this more 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 than ever usually caused by. Um, chain that's too tight it's got too much tension on it and so when it gets loaded it, it ends up binding the rear sprocket and causing a depression in the uh the sprocket um and we'll get into that maybe a little bit more later on this video um chain condition chain stretch measure with gauge um this is a gauge right down here you know um this right here just tells you it's a worn out chain only for tests. This is a new chain. Obviously, it's not going to drop in there. If it did drop in there, that would tell you, you know, only use it for testing. I pretty much, if it goes in there, it's it's done with me. I'm not even going to use it for a test. But, uh, you know, these are pretty helpful, easy to find. Um, chain chain tool for 219. I've never really seen one for 35 chain, but I'm sure they do make them. Um Bad links. Bad links are something you kind of have to look for visually. You'll kind of see them as a kink. One of the link, you know, in the straight part of the chain, you won't, one of the links won't lay down. Um, probably the easiest way to find it. Lubrication of the chain is also important in this topic. <clears throat> it's probably going to be its own topic because it's so in depth and there's so much to it. It's really quite involved and, and, and really deserves its own topic. So we'll move on. Just uh, understanding go-kart chains, there's two types of chains that you'll see. Um, there's bush chains and roller chains. Now, go-kart chains are all going to be the bush style chain. Um, this is a 219 chain. This is a 35 chain. And then, and that's really what this video is going to be more about is this 219-35 dilemma that we've seen and in, in mainly to a six go-karting. So just bear with me and I'm going to explain why you need to be going with one of those um, versus the other. But here's the two different chains here. Um, on this 35 chain, you can see it pretty easily because it's a space chain. But <clears throat> this bushing is solidly pressed through the inner link. And it doesn't rotate on that inner link. So that's something to keep in mind. We'll talk about that later as well. Um, it's the same thing on the 219 chain. It's just tighter end links on them. So you got your outer link. You got your inner links. You got your bushings. Um, and then you got your pin. <clears throat> Some of the specifications of carding chains is, you know, your pitch, your bushings, and then the weight of the chain itself. So, um, talking about pitch. Pitch is important because sprockets are matched, meaning they're pitched polygons. And so the pitch of your chain is going to have a big impact on the sprocket. And as you look at these two, I actually took this from TS Race, and they have a, a pretty good article about 219 and 35 chain. Um, and I took this from their website. It actually demonstrates this pretty well. So you got 
two similar sized sprockets. And um, since sprockets aren't really round, they're a pitch polygon, which means that they're, <clears throat> they have to follow the pitch of the chain. If they didn't, they obviously wouldn't work. Um, so, you know, you have your 219 pitch, which is 7.774 millimeter and 35 pitch was 9.925 millimeter. Obviously bigger pitch, less teeth. And that's important because it turns out that as you, even with the same size sprocket, if you make the pitch smaller, there's some gains to be had there. And what I mean by that is if you take 360 degrees and you divide it by 11, you have 32.7 degrees per bend. As that chain comes in, that's the kind of bend it's gonna have to do. It's gonna have to do a 32 degree bend for each link. And on a 9235 chain, it's gonna have to make a 40 degree bend. Um, you know, that's, that's pretty significantly different for basically the same size sprocket. Um, you have two type of chain frictions. One's contact friction, one's bending friction. Talk a little bit about the bending friction there as it, it, as it bends, you know, there's friction involved. So the less you have to bend the chain, the less loss you're gonna have. That's one of the, one of the big benefits of the 219 chain. Um, if you double the teeth, you have the friction. And that, I know that sounds weird, um, but it turns out that's really true. If you if you double the teeth on a chain, you'll end up halving the friction that's in that system. So move on. Bushings. Um, this is one of the bigger parts of a lot of people don't understand exactly how the bushings work in a chain. And this picture describes it pretty well, but let's just talk a little bit about the difference between 219 and 35. So, you know, 219 bushing diameter is 4.59, 35 is 5.08. Bushing width is actually wider in a 219 chain at five millimeter, that's in between the plates. Um, and on a 35 chain, it's 4.76. Um, so if you have two sprockets of the same size, if I was gonna run a 219 chain verse at my local track, if I'm running a 219 verse, a 35 chain, I'm gonna end up being on a 19 tooth, 219 versus a 16 tooth on a 35. Um, just kind of how it works out. And what you'll find out is, even though there's slightly less per link, because you've, you've made more, you end up with more surface area on a 219 than on a 35. And you would think that larger surface area is gonna equal more friction, but that's actually not true because as you increase, or the pressure stays the same, but if you increase the surface area, you also reduce the pressure on that area. And probably the best way to describe that would be snow tires and driving in the snow. So if you're driving in the snow with some really wide tires, it's really hard for your car to get traction. And so you have you know, very low amounts of friction between you and the ground. Whereas a snow tire is usually a lot skinnier and that allows it to get down into the ground. And that kind of is, happens on the chain as well where it's the lubrication. Um, the more surface area you have, it turns out that you'll have more space for lubrication for the same amount of friction. So you actually end up reducing the friction just from the surface area involved. The <clears throat> chains actually only bend where the outer pins and the inner pins meet. And as I talked before, these bushings, they are fixed on the inner links. So they do not rotate, um, meaning that, and, and I don't know where I got this image. It's a really good image because it shows the loading on the side of the chains. Um, and, and that happens mainly as a result of <clears throat> that, those inner links not spinning. Um, and <clears throat> as the sprocket turns and the roller moves away from the top dead center to a position away from top dead center, you, you have an effect that continuously changes the radius and it causes a fluctuating velocity in the chain um, for pretty much the given drive torque. So this fluctuating velocity is called polygonal action. It's um, Polyon and Tordion, I guess, discovered this in 1965. And I'm sure I just butchered the hell out of their names. But anyways, they um, 
they basically discovered that this polygonal action, if you reduce it, especially on a chain like the system we're talking here, you'll end up reducing those fluctuations and you'll get increased efficiency. So another reason that you're going to end up with more teeth is going to end up with a better overall efficiency. Um, also, this is the space chain we talked about <clears throat> a little bit earlier with 35. Um, pretty much all your 35 cart chains are going to be this way. I think Panther makes one that's not. I've used that before and actually had big time issues with it. Um, but the space chain allows for additional deflection and also for easier lubrication. One of the problems, though, <clears throat> as you'll find out, is that even if you look at this image here, this is this is actually a brand new 35 space chain that I took a picture of. And you can see that this this is sticking out here and it's tight on this one. And, and so you'll end up with these, these links not being perfectly aligned. And so you'll get this um, polygonal action as it approaches the sprockets. And that actually causes some loss there, too. So just something to think about. <clears throat> Wait. Now... Different brands have different weights, even for the same specification. So um, 219 chains, 120 links. I got a Panther chain, a DID chain, an EK chain. Those are the weights just on a food scale. Pretty quick and easy way to check them. And there's an ounce between the lightest and heaviest chain. Now, I do think that there's going to be some resulting strength differences between these. Um, the Panther chain is more of an oval on the end link, and the DID chain looks more like a snowman. It's got more cut out in the center, a little more scalloped. It's probably going to be a little bit weaker, although I'm going to tell you it is a very high-quality chain, and it's my go-to chain um, for 219. So a little bit of weight continued. 35 versus 219 chain. Um, 106 links of... 35 Reaper chain, which I think is RT, RVL or R, whatever it is. So 12.85 ounces, 130 links of 219 chains, 10.4 ounces. And that's that DID HDZ chain, um, which is the lightest one. It's, that's two and a half ounces um, for 40 inches of chain, which is longer than pretty much anybody's going to run. But it is it is an important factor. It is it becomes more of an important factor of sprockets and, and that's going to be its own topic too. But just keep that in your mind that weight does make a difference, not just because you have to spin them up. Um, you know, you have that rotational mass. You also have to slow it down on their braking, which I don't think that's the bigger thing at play here. It's more when you start getting into the physics of how the sprockets work with extra weight. So <clears throat> chain tension. Um, chain tension plays a role in both handling and performance. Um, chain that is too tight costs poor handling. I'm sure most of you guys have had this happen for whatever reason. You set the chain too tight. You have a really bad push. Usually the cart will bind up pretty bad. Um, this is when you get a lot of damage to that rear sprocket. As you load that cart, you'll end up putting way too much force into that, into that sprocket. And it will actually usually divot the center of the chain links. Um, it can hurt the chain, but generally it kills the sprocket, um, which is a little bit different than power. Um, it's more of a stretching than a uh, pulling force. The, um, the chain that's too loose will sometimes come off. Uh, some people swear that they don't. I, I've always found that if it's too loose, it's coming off. But any, it also allows for extra slack on the non-tension side, which kind of makes the chain work against itself and then and then bend back the opposite way, which ends up giving you additional losses and, and friction. So I always tell people, just try to find that sweet spot and then use a chain tension tool. Like um, this is the true tension tool. I just stole this off their, this picture off their website. Just ensures that each time you chain gears, you end up having a, a good repeatable tension every time. So what chain should you run? I'm pretty sure you should be convinced by now that. 219 is a pretty clear winner when it comes to chain type for carding. Unless you need something for higher strength, or if you're in a situation like what I've been in the past where you just cannot run 219 chain, whether your carding group won't allow it, or if you're running a 
a one inch clutch. Um, I ran into this on a, a different motor, but a one inch clutch. I could not run a 219 because nobody made a 219 driver for it. So anyway, um, next topic is going to be Sprockets 101. So don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications and comment below. Thanks guys.